Hi, my name is Josh Moran, and welcome to the Financial Aid System of Tennessee, or FAST. Uh, this is video four for the FAST system. If you just finished video three, I lied. I said the next video would cover DEG certification and verification, but I realized this one should probably come first. So video five will actually cover DEG certification and verification. Uh, before you watch this video, I recommend that you watch video one covering a basic basic introduction to FAST. Uh, that video can be found on my YouTube channel. If you need the link, uh, just send me an email at josh.moran at tn.gov. That's josh.moran at tn.gov, and I'll forward the link to you. We started about a year and a half ago to write uh, rewrite the certification processes in eGrants. Um, out of everything we needed to update, we believed that certification was the highest priority. It either took way too long to load or it timed out before you could certify more than a handful of people, causing you to have to restart all your data entry. If you considered where you spent most of your time in eGrants, it was probably certification and probably most of that time was spent with dealing issues in the system. Uh, when we started working on addressing those issues, it became apparent that in order to fix them, we would have to adopt a new system, and that was why uh, FAST came about when it did. While designing it, we had three ideals that we tried to strike, uh, st uh, st stick to whenever possible. Uh, first off, we had to resolve the timeouts while certifying. Uh, this is the error uh, that would pop up and tell you that you'd need to restart uh, filling the roster out. Um, this was caused in part by modern disaster recovery requirements. Uh, the state of Tennessee requires us to have two uh, different copies of eGrants running at any given time. One copy runs downtown, uh, the other runs over in Smyrna. Uh, so if something bad happens downtown, like a flood or fire, uh, then the copy in Smyrna takes over. It just makes sense, right? Uh, when there's not an emergency going on, the two copies can be used to balance out heavy workloads. Uh, what was happening when you were certifying was that you were being uh, switched from downtown to Smyrna or vice versa. And when you were being switched over to a new location, it had no idea who you were and was making you start all over. Um, when eGrands was written, that type of uh, dual location thing didn't exist. Servers were expensive back then. Uh, we, so we had to rewrite the system to teach it about those things. Uh, the only timeout that should exist now is the 20 minute global timeout that we talked about in video one. And that only appears if you haven't done any data entry for the past 20 minutes. Uh, even then, uh, if it pops up, it's gonna give you the opportunity to stay where you are and avoid losing any work. Uh, second, uh, we needed to speed up the load times where possible. Uh, you're going to see significant increases to load times. Uh, some larger rosters may still take a while to load, but uh, they are significantly faster than eGrants. Next, the processes had to work as close as possible to how they work now. We know that uh, it would not be a good idea to launch a new system and also have to retrain everyone from scratch on how to do their job. Uh, my strong belief is that you if you currently use eGrants, you'll be able to certify and fast with very little transition, honestly and truthfully. I, I'm actually betting that you'll spend more time figuring out the menu that, uh, than you will on how to certify your program. Um, however, we did make a few minor updates or improvements, um, mostly to avoid repeating mistakes, or uh, we did make updates when it would not impact the original function. Uh, for example, later in the video, you'll uh, see that you can still search by last name, but we threw in the ability also to search for first name and social security numbers. And we made those searches wildcard uh, searches so you can find partial matches. We also made changes to the mechanics of each roster so navigation was the same across each program. Uh, for example, uh, once you know how to navigate TSAA, you will also know how to navigate every other roster in FAST because they all operate the exact same. Um, the last rule, uh, which is actually, I guess, number four, um, uh, that we did not touch the batch certification processes. Uh, 
absolutely did not touch them. So if you use them in egrands, they will work the exact same and fast. The only difference is that we moved the buttons for the file upload and download, and I'll show you where they're at in this video. To access the certification roster, you're going to click on the roster menu item and then select certification. This will take you to the fast certification parameter screen. Uh, you'll have four parameters to fill out before you can start certifying. First, you'll need to pick the program from the aid program dropdown. Uh, the options in this menu should match uh, to just those programs which you have access to certify. Uh, second, you'll select academic year. Most of the time you're only going to have one option, but uh, in case there's an active crossover period for that program, then you might have two years available at certain times of the year. The next parameter is school. This should auto-populate for you. We have this in there to accommodate people who have access to multiple uh, institutions. Most people, though, will only have access to a single school. The last required parameter is term. The one difference from eGrants uh, is that we're going to display all the terms you certify for that program, regardless if they're available for certification. Uh, what's going to happen if you select a term that is not available for certification? is that you'll get a message telling you that the term is not available until a certain date. And so we can see that over here. I think this one, yeah. Uh, so for the summer term, it's telling us certification for this term does not begin until that date there on the screen. Once you have your, um, your parameters fill out, you're ready you're ready to access the certification roster. Uh, but before we do that, uh, notice these buttons here for the upload roster and the download roster. Um, they only appear on programs that have batch processes and egrants. Um, here's how you're going to get uh, your file and uh, send back the batch certification file. If you click on download roster, right, um, you recognize this screen, right? If you batch certified in egrants, um, this should be a familiar screen. It needs a facelift that uh, we'll get to ASAP, but your terms and your parameters are already filled out from the prior screen. You'll hit download and you'll see uh, your file request screen along with that file. Uh, if we go back to upload the file, same thing. I'll click the upload roster button. And again, you recognize this screen. You've used it before. Um, it's going to work the same as it did in eGrands. Click it and select your file, and you're ready to go. Back. Select my program, my year, and my term. I'm going to click on Certification Roster. Uh, once you bring up the roster, it should appear familiar uh, if you certified in eGrants. And the thing I'd like to point out is that it loaded quickly, right? It loaded fast. And this roster has 4,500 people on it uh, loaded, like, let me reload it, right? Uh, very quickly. Not every program inside of FAST is going to load as quickly as TSAA. TSAA is a relatively uh, simple program. Um, compared with some of the, the data that's brought in for you know, other programs. Um, but it, it, it's a really good demonstration of the goals of uh, the fast rewrite. Um, when I go through in here and I'm going to go ahead and certify a couple people, when I save, uh, it comes back and it loaded quickly. It loaded fast, right? Uh, so we're really happy about that. Um, but again, um, don't expect every roster, HOPE and DEG um, are ones right now that we're seeing. It takes uh, significantly longer to load, uh, but still significantly quicker than eGrins ever did. Um, before we go into this, I would like to bring up that we have several static updates that are planned for this page. Um, every one of these different sections in here, someone different worked on it. So uh, now that we have the mechanics in on this this roster and all the other rosters, we're working on um, uh, changing the fonts over to make sure that they match um, 
adjusting the height of these things. Uh, term, for example, does not need to be this wide. We'll free up some space there. Uh, we think there's a good chance then that's going to allow that upload and download buttons to exist on the same row. Um, we'll do the same thing with columns inside the rosters, like term amount does not need to be this wide, for example. Not a big deal here on TSAA, but on some of the other rosters, it's going to free up some space on there. Um, once inside the roster, you notice on um, that first line, we kept that filter by last name uh, that you had in eGrants. So I can click on E, for example, and it should go through and filter out my roster to just those people whose last name started with E. Click on all to bring everyone back. Um, you can perform a search like you did in eGrants. Uh, for example, I'm going to copy that one because I am not going to spell it. I can do a search uh, by last name, uh, but I can also go in there and let's try out Sam. Let's try Smith. And so what this is going to do is going to give me anyone who has uh, SMI either in the last name or hopefully I have someone in the first name. Let's try some other combination. Yeah. Uh, so H-A-Y that I can see that uh, here in the first name as well. So. Uh, what you type into the search page will actually look for both the first name and last name. Uh, technically, it'll look at the social, but um, since socials are all numeric, I type in 231. I'm going to find anyone who has a social with 231 located in there at any position inside the social. First, middle, or last part of the social security number. Uh, next, you can see that we also changed it or gave you the ability to specify the, the number of students per page, 10, 25, 50, or 100. We haven't found a big di uh, difference performance-wise when cho choosing any number. We believe at this point that most people won't want to work using larger numbers. However, if you're working off uh, an older machine, you might want to stick with a smaller number if you're seeing any issues. Uh, but uh, if you do run into an issue, uh, send me an email, let me know. I'm kind of curious to see what it does. We haven't been able to identify one, but um, I, I do see that it's going to be a possibility. You can also go in and type in the specific page number. Very useful on this, on here, this would have 453 pages. So instead of uh, doing next page, I can go through directly to a page number. I'm still filtering. I can go to a particular page number. Uh, if I didn't like to do that, I can go through, uh, hit next page, uh, previous page. Also, I have a limited number of pages I can go through here. That works the same way as it, or very similar to how it did in eGrands. Uh, but we put this in here in case you had some a uh, very large roster that you wouldn't have to hit next page for two days to get to it. We also made a change on the roster to where any column that is display only should be able to sort the roster. So that would be any column like EFC or program type on TSAA not certification indicator enrollment or term because you update those but those items that are view only for informational purposes you can click on it and you can then sort the roster by uh, that value click on it again you can uh, do it by descending order um, so here for example if i wanted to certify my zero efc first i could sort them do it that way uh, program type uh, for most people May not a big use, use, but TCATs, for example, I think could probably use that, make correction to program length before they certify. Uh, just uh, make sure the values are updated. Also, uh, the one thing that you'll notice on all the various rosters is that the columns are the same. 
Um, the only difference will be the new columns on DEG that we added for give. Uh, we did actually take one off of hope that we do not believe was being used anymore. Uh, so you should recognize all the columns. Uh, none of them have been repurposed for anything. Uh, we did rearrange them though. Um, what we did on every roster, if it was not already like that, was make the certification indicator the first updatable column. So what that's going to allow us to do is if you choose a certain indicator that should require an amount to be a certain value, we're going to go ahead and update it for you. Uh, hopefully we're going to save you a couple keystrokes. Um, if we do a couple, this one less than full time, it's going to update the enrollment status as well as the dollar amount. Uh, other ones we can see not enrolled with something similar. So hopefully just to save you steps. Validation works a little bit differently as well. So at any time a value gets entered in which is not an acceptable value for that program and certification indicator, you're going to get a red message explaining that uh, something is wrong. Uh, it should give you a, a rough idea of what's going, um, what's wrong with it. Um, you can either correct them now, but if you're working on a large number, maybe you've got 100 displayed per page. Uh, when you go to save, it's going to tell you there's one invalid record. Do you want to ignore this and save the valid records? Uh, you can hit no and it'll take you back to the roster. You can make your correction. Or if you hit yes, it's going to go ahead, uh, save your records, uh, your valid uh, certifications, and it's going to leave that person on the roster. So now I can go in date it and certify it. Um, the save, cancel, and save and pay buttons will work the same as they did in eGrants. Use save uh, to save your progress. Um, as you certify up and up until you're done certifying, uh, cancel will take you out of the roster. You use save and pay only when you finish certifying and are ready for TSEC to process your payments for this program. Again, it's the same as it was uh, inside of eGrants. We made no change there. The last thing that we'll go over in this video is transaction comments. So we did make one change. Uh, so for anyone certified with any value for any program, the transaction comments now should all follow one template. And I'll go in, bring that student up. The transaction comment format uh, will be the same for every program. The college's name uh, certified the program name with this certification indicator for this term and for this dollar amount. Anything beyond that point uh, will be add-ons that are specific to the program. TSAA, for example, um, requires enrollment status. So it's got that little add on at the end of that, um, that part, which is the same for all uh, schools, uh, that tells data specific to this program. And so you would see the same thing with uh, Tennessee Promise, for example. It's going to tell you the number of hours. Uh, dual enrollment will tell you the GPA. Uh, the one thing in dual enrollment, we actually do not list out all the course information in the comment. Um, but otherwise, other than that, you should be re able to recreate that entire certification for that student using that uh, specific comment uh, and the sp one specific comment. Uh, this only applies to, to manual certification inside of FAST. Uh, eGrants will still use the same older format and batch certification, even inside of FAST, batch certification will still use the old um, comment structure, which was different for every program. Um, that's it for this video. Uh, we will do individuals for each program. They will likely come down a little bit later. Uh, they should all be quick. I'm expecting most of them to be around five minutes apiece. Um, in those videos, we'll cover program specific information like uh, valid values for each certification indicator, uh, like uh, how summer reallocation works. Uh, spoiler alert, it's the same as eGrants. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Uh, if I need to spend a little bit more time on something, let me know. 
And if there was something we should have fixed but missed, let me know. My email is josh.moran at tn.gov, and I will see you in the next video.